My name is Katie Pyatt. I will be hosting tonight. Um, but before we get started, I wanted to do like, I don't know, warm up exercise slash something that I've always wanted to do on stage. Um, so who, who remembers the Johnny Carson Tonight Show theme? <laughs> we got some brave people back there. I love you. Okay, so if you didn't hear that, I just want everybody to do this with me. The Tonight Show theme goes da 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 You guys think you can recreate that? Okay, so I'm going to exit, and we're going to count down from three, and you're going to do that, and I'm going to come back up here, okay? All right, ready? Three, two, one. Thank you for doing that. I've always wanted to do that on stage because they don't really let women be on at primetime night, so they just have us on during lunch. Uh, so that might be my only chance to ever get to do that, so thank you guys. Um, uh, my name is Katie Pyatt. I'll be hosting tonight. Um, we have, gosh, we have improv and music and more badass music, so if you guys came not prepared to have a good time, I mean, it's going to not be good for you because it's going to be great. Um, woo! I just want to thank uh, Olivia for having me here, and I want to thank Keith at the sound booth for putting up with my shenanigans. Woo! Um, but before everybody else gets to go, I'm going to do some stuff for you. Um, so, I know what you're all thinking. Yes, I did decide to dress like a 90s witch tonight, um, but like the queer version. So, because they're getting ready to take Buffy off of Netflix, and I'm like, oh. I know, I know. If you didn't know, April 1st is like no Buffy on Netflix anymore, so go watch, go watch it. I know, I just, I just watched the prom episode today, so just thought that, you know. Um, so anyways, you guys, did you recently see they had that, like, Trump march in Lake Oswego? Yeah. I know, right? Like, he already won, but I guess, you know, keep rubbing salt in that wound, that's fine. The First Amendment is great, right? Like, I love it. We can do good things with it, and then weird things with it, whatever. But um, here's the funny part. I was reading the newspaper yesterday, and I saw this headline that was like, Celebrity Klansmen Spotted at March. And like, here's my question. How do you, like, celebrate being a celebrity clansman? Like, how do you get that title? Like, do you just talk to anybody, or do you, like, talk in whispers, or are you just like, hey, kid, I'm, like, really racist. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, like, so racist. Like, the idea of idiosyncratic experience of a non-white person is so complicated for me that, like, <laughs> like, and I get to wear weird clothes sometimes. <laughs> like I'm celebrity. I don't. I don't understand. I think the irony was kind of lost on that headline, or at least the person that was there thinking they're a celebrity for that. Um, and like, as a performer and a comedian and an avid newspaper reader, I love irony. Like, I love the irony of when men ask me to explain what emotional labor is. <laughs> like, you're doing it. Why do you ask me to explain it? Use your Googler, okay? Like, I love the irony of like when men throw tantrums when I explain what male fragility is. Like, you're doing it. Like, at this previous TBA festival, I got invited to do a rant on stage and I chose to rant about male fragility. Um, I actually have a show coming up in Seattle, June 9th through the 11th, so plug. Um, you guys are free. Um, but I ranted about male fragility, and after the show, this dude came up to me and he was like, yeah, I really liked your thing, like, it was pretty good, like, I had to leave halfway through to go, like, work or whatever, but it was pretty good. And I was like, did you have to leave, or could you not handle it all? And of course I was kidding, I was like, you know, but he was like, I had to work, and I was like, you're doing it. <laughs> and just in case, just for a hot minute, if you don't know what male fragility is, male fragility is for anyone who has been raised male in a patriarchy, where pretty much we teach males that they can't show any emotion except anger and dominance, and sometimes that makes really weird, magical, not magical things happen where men think they can do whatever they want, say whatever they want without accountability. Like, I had a friend recently go to a social gathering, 
She went there to gather socially. And uh, she got introduced to her partners like bros from college. You know, like getting introduced to your partner's bros is like a big deal in a relationship. And they let, like they received her into the group and then immediately started talking about how it's hard to have sex with feminists. Oh. Yeah, right? Where should I start with this one? Um, maybe the old college try isn't good enough anymore, you guys. Right? Right? I'm pretty sure um, in the song Formation, Beyonce doesn't say, uh, if he fucks me what he thinks is good, I'll take his ass to <laughs> Like, I'm pretty sure in the song that she doesn't sing, if he fucks me until he gets his and maybe I get mine, I'll take his ass to Red Lobster. <laughs> I'm pretty sure she says, if he fucks me good, as in I forgot where I was, it was that good, then I'll take his ass to Red Lobster. <laughs> just saying, just saying. Um, speaking of Beyonce, the other day, right? She's a yeah, goddess. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Right? She got robbed at the Grammys, again. Yeah. Lemonade is a masterpiece. Let's just take a moment to think about it. It's my favorite. Um, my partner and I were going to buy each other lemonade for Christmas, and then he beat me to it and got it first. But, uh, now we own it, so it's okay. <laughs> but, um, no, speaking of Beyonce, I found this really amazing article the other day about, it was called, like, White Women, Here Are Why Your Critiques of Beyonce's Pregnancy Photos Are Racist. And it was written by a woman of color. It was really amazing. Uh, it went through, like, how there is social stigma and stereotypes and judgment involving women of color being pregnant and having children in like mainstream and media and I read it and I learned a lot and so I shared it on my Facebook and the comment section looked like this. Comment number one, white woman that I don't know who's a friend of a friend who saw my public post. Oh my god, I'm not racist. I'm a white woman and I love Beyonce and I'm not racist. Why is this writer so divisive? Right. <laughs> Comment number two, person I sort of know who slept on my couch three years ago because they knew my roommate, white woman also. Why are these non-issues being made into issues? When non-issues get turned into issues, it just makes everything worse. <laughs> Again, where do I start with this one, you guys? Sweet babies, no. <laughs> Don't do that. Okay, number one. Don't make it about you. Let me say that for the people in the back. Don't make it about you, okay? When you're a white person on the internet and anywhere and you say, I'm not racist and I'm white, that's like putting the All Lives Matter button on your shirt. Don't do it, okay? Number two, you don't get to decide what is or is not an issue when it comes to race, okay? Right? If you're the top of an antiquated pyramid of oppression, you don't get to identify with the middle and the bottom parts. Okay? I don't know why I have to tell this to you. You're white. You're racist by association. Number three, just Paula Dean, just fix some humble pie and like put it in your mouth, okay? Just while you're eating and enjoying the, the humble pie, you won't be able to say anything and you'll get to listen to your black friends and their experiences in America. Okay? Just eat the humble pie. Just It's made with butter. You love butter, Polly. <laughs> just have it in your mouth, okay? Number four, I just added this one recently. Number four, if you're a white person and you see another white person doing this on the internet, tell them no. Tell them to stop, okay? Has anybody seen Get Out yet? Yeah, yeah. Don't be like the Becky in that, okay? <laughs> she didn't even tell her parents about her boyfriend at all. And she's like, oh my God, I didn't know my parents were really racist. That's polite racism. If you don't say no to the person doing it, you're part of the team. Right? Right? Okay. Just thought we should talk about that for a second. Speaking of things that are horrible and shouldn't exist, let's talk about gender reveal parties for a second. Who, just cheer for a second if you know what a gender reveal party is. Right, I'm from Missouri, so I've seen a lot of them. Um, a gender reveal party is basically where a group of adults gather and there are no presents and you celebrate the genitals of an unborn child. <laughs> it kind of sounds like, to me, like something Caligula would do. <laughs> like people like release balloons or they like shoot off like dust, which by the way, you can't have a child to force gender roles on if you hit the pregnant woman with the dust cannon. There's a lot of videos on YouTube of people being like, oh no, I accidentally pointed the cannon at the mom. Don't do that, okay? <laughs> um, and then there are cakes. People have cakes at these parties, and 
Google image search and my Facebook, my, my friends from back home's Facebooks tell me that uh, these kids say things like, rifles are ruffles. Oh. Oh. Right? <laughs> Lures are lace. Oh, Tractors or tiaras. Oh. And all that really tells me about your family is that you hate when femme people use farming equipment. <laughs> and like, Tractors or tiaras, what is that, a TLC show? <laughs> I mean, I'd watch it. But I'd be like stoned as fuck. I'd probably have like those little like chicken and a biscuit crackers with like spray cheese on them. <laughs> Which is probably being served at a gender reveal party right now. <laughs> Shout out to my hometown. Um, but let's keep talking about these cakes for a moment. So, you know, when you're revealing whatever it's always pink for vaginas or blue for penises because like those are the only choices i guess <laughs> and sometimes people fill their cakes with m m's so then when you cut the cake open and the m m's fall out you're like great now my baby will make 78 cents to the dollar yes. <laughs> right so like right she likes it um <laughs> So it's like the, the construct, like gender is a construct and like the grossness of people being like, yay, this baby's not even born yet, but it's going to be a slugger or whatever, doesn't get to you. Um, M&M's inside of a cake means less cake. <laughs> and, and if I'm about anything, it's gender fluidity and plenty of cake. <laughs> Applause for cake, I like it. Um, I think if you're going to reveal anything about a baby, it would be like if you're going to have a lizard baby. <laughs> like you, you invite your whole family, you know, when you cut the cake open, like live lizards come out. You know? And like, then you'd probably prepare a speech about how you like got pregnant with a lizard baby. Maybe like serve some green punch or like, maybe like you're having a chameleon baby so then everything's rainbow because rainbows are fucking awesome. Right? That's pretty much all I have for you guys tonight, but... So, we're gonna get to the first people. I'm sorry, this is where I had to keep my phone because I don't have pockets. If you saw my underwear, it's okay, they're not mine. Um, so, our second act, or our first and a half act, I don't know what I am, I'm just like a prop. But, um, Mom Jeans. Mom Jeans is a powerhouse group of improvisers taking Portland stages by storm, bringing a fresh female energy to familiar formats. You guys, that's a lot of alliteration, and I'm into it. Um, fresh, funny, and organically astute. That had quotes around it, so somebody said that. They may or may not be psychic, but they're definitely back in style. And have you guys seen those Mom Jeans that Nordstrom's just released? No. Yeah. Oh my god. Mom Jeans are back, but now they have like clear knee patches that are what? just like plastic. No. Yeah, so this group is not that. <laughs> They're way better. Everybody, mom jeans. Woo! Woo! Let's give it up for Katie Pye.